G'day, it's Charlie ZL2, Charlie Tango Mike. Thought I'd do a quick video before I disappear again for another couple of weeks. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm sort of playing around with some transmit circuits. So I've taken off the board um, the receive circuits, so the receive mixer and the receive um, detector. So they're now off the board. And in their place, I've uh, made up, um, based around the same um, sort of topology, um, a mixer here with the carrier oscillator coming in from the this 5351 and then um, the mixer over here to heterodyne it to the required RF frequency and then the other thing on the board is a, a band pass filter in this particular case it's for the 40 meter band because uh, we're doing these tests at 7.1 megs so as we just said those two circuits are based around the same configuration as, as last time um, so on the right hand side we have the mixer so we have coming in audio from the Teensy uh, through a 10 microfarad capacitor and the carry oscillator uh, that should be carry not BFO um, and outputting um, now in this particular case point to note this is not a balanced modulator so as a consequence we have the carrier coming out as well um, and, that, and that is a problem and we'll see that later on um, this is not typically used for a single sideband transceiver um, ordinarily would have a balanced modulator to, to knock down that carrier um, but the whole idea of this radio for me was to basically have a bit of a play and to see how far I could get um, with this type of setup uh, so it's been interesting in that respect on the left hand side is the mix that comes on the output of the crystal um, filter so there's our IF coming in through a 10 nanofarad capacitor this time and there's our VFO um, heterodyning and then the output is our desired RF frequency. In this particular case it'll be 7.1 megs for this particular test. So back to the radio itself and excuse me if I cough but um, I've had a bit of a cold which is a little bit annoying. <coughs> anyway so uh, from a software point of view we have the audio coming in through the mic socket. Uh, here I'm just paralleling up the phone running in a, um, an audio file. The audio goes in the Teensy and runs through a fur filter. Uh, that fur filter is set for 2.8 kilohertz and we'll look at that software later on and then the output of that which is now low passed goes to the uh, the mixer as we saw on the uh, the circuit. Okay so we'll do a um, do a transmission so we'll just feed through the audio file so that's coming through and uh, we'll key it. And over here we can see we've gone transmit and uh, just got the spectrum just, just looking at the audio coming in. Uh, for interest's sake, uh, also got the S meter up and running. So in this particular case on transmit, we're just looking at the the, uh, the average peak for the incoming mic signal on receive that was doing the same thing for the received audio. And I just basically calibrated um, the S meters based off the, uh, the commercial radio. And it worked quite well. And again, we'll look at that code um, in a sec. So anyway, um, as we can see down there, we are transmitting, if I don't get it out of focus, <coughs> we're transmitting uh, lower side band. So if we just turn up the volume, you can see that coming through up there. So that's, so that's coming through quite nicely. If we just change the modulation down here to its upper side band, and then we flick that upper side band. We get the other side then coming through. Back down the lower side band. And back down the lower side band. So it's um it's not too bad, but of interest. If we come back to um to uh, the computer, and I'll just run up and parallel the SDR. So what we have here is an SDR radio that I'm just sniffing the output. You can see there at the top that um, <clears throat> we're sitting at 7.1 megs, so that's um, the frequency we got coming out. We can see our, our lower sideband coming through quite nicely, but as we can see here, we've got that little gnarly little um, carrier still coming through. Let me just go to upper sideband, and we can see the sideband uh, swap across there to the other side. And uh, as a consequence of this coming through, well, we're just not we're just not suppressing um, well enough our our carrier and if I go back to the radio and I just tune off 
he, you can hear that carrier coming through loud and clear. So that is not ideal, but at the end of the day, um, I kind of knew I was going to be on a hiding to nothing because this wasn't a balanced modulator. So uh, in that respect, it was a good learning exercise. So what that basically means now is I'm at a bit of a crossroads, and I'm just trying to think what I might want to do. And what I think I will do is I'm going to have another look at this radio here. So this was a radio I built, um, I don't know, last month I think it was. Uh, single side band, um, again using crystal filters. Um, this radio was all built around uh, the 2N3904. So I wanted to sort of play around with uh, that particular transistor all the way through the radio. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to totally pull this radio apart and combine... Uh, what we've done in the Teensy software all around here and we use that to feed into uh, the homebrew balanced modulators here it's diode based um, and might just have a bit of a think but I think we might actually go back to using or well, say again uh, continue using the, the JFETs the, the J310s as our amplifiers um, again, why? Because I've got friggin' 210 of them, I think it was, and um, I want to continue using them. And the beauty is, too, uh, in an amplifier configuration, we can use that second gate to bias the gain. Um, because at the moment, this radio here has <coughs> a uh, an audio-based AGC, and uh, it might be quite interesting to actually apply that AGC back into the um, into the gain stages in the IF. Uh, and what we'll also do then is, is rather than having these um, two relays to switch between um, the transmit and receive with the crystal filters, that will continue on with the original idea with the other radio, which was to use um, diode switching, which is something, excuse me, <coughs> oh dearie me, which is something which um, I still want to, to better understand and learn how to do. So I think that's what we'll do, and then we will continue on uh, once we've got the low power RF, we can uh, look at building up a um, bespoke, um, probably RF510. Why? Because I haven't done it before. Um, power amplifier, and see if we can do that. So I think that's going to be the best of both worlds, where we get a um, much better carrier suppression, and we get to continue using the Teensy, so which I wanted to do for the audio filter control for both the transmit and receive, and that diode switching, which was another aim of the whole radio. So I think we'll still meet our intent of what we're trying to achieve. Um, what I'll do, I'll just break here, and then we will do a little bit of a look at the software, uh, because that software will roll across into to this radio here. Like I say, any questions, sing out. Um, apologies, I'll be away for uh, a good couple of weeks, um, but when we get back, we will certainly um, get into this. And feel free, um, I'll check um, comments on the way to feed through any questions or comments um, and if you think this is a bad idea let me know if there's something else you want to look at again let me know because um, I, I'm learning heaps um, and I'm hopefully fingers crossed um, other people too anyway let me just break there and uh, we'll have a look at the software okay so let's um, let's have a look at the software so as we can see <clears throat> um, we are going to be using a fur filter for the incoming RF so we need to assign some coefficients for that um, if you go back to a video series that on the SDR radio you'll find one which looks at how to use the Iowa Hills software to generate these coefficients um, and I basically use exactly the same software to create a 2.8 kilohertz um, and these are the settings there 60 tap um, fur filter and then it's just a matter of throwing that in there. And then in terms of the objects for the audio shield, we've assigned one here. This is an audio filter fur filter. And I've just decided to call it transmit low pass filter. And as we had from the receive side, so no change there, that audio filter by quad, um, I've just now just decided to call it receiver low pass filter. So in terms of the assignments, which is sort of like the electrical wiring, but it's more from a, um, a logic point of view, that audio input on the receive side here goes to the receiver low pass filter. Uh, it's also going to the fast Fourier transform. And as you can see there, it's also going to the S meter. 
<clears throat> and that S meter is another audio uh, library object um, called um, audio analyze peak. So again, it's, it's another function. <coughs> excuse me, uh, built in that audio library. On the transmit side, oh sorry, and also the other thing too, the output of that low pass filter on the receive side goes into what I've called a filter relay. Uh, in effect, that, that object is a mixer. Now in the audio library context, a mixer does not multiply two signals, it sums two signals. Uh, and as you'll see later on down in the, uh, in the logic, what I've done is, and on the transmit side, now let's just hold that thought. On the transmit side, the audio comes in, um, and in, on the fly, that audio input is either line in for receive or microphone in for transmit. So that microphone in on transmit goes to the transmitter low pass filter. The output of that low pass filter goes to the, to the relay, which is that mix we talked about just before. And then the output of that relay goes to audio output. And then that audio output is either line out for transmit or it's the headphone out for receive. <coughs> oh, gosh. Right, so down to the main loop. Um, I won't go to too much here. Um, that's the S meter uh, on transmit. We are looking at the, um, the, the peaks of the mic gain. And then on transmit, so again on receive, it's looking at the the peaks on the audio frequency coming in, and then on transmit, it's looking at the um, it's looking at the mic gain, and it's a running average. Uh, the running average over seven samples, just to smooth it out. Uh, the next two parts here are just basically turning the radio either into or, or saying turning off the receiver and on the transmitter, and vice versa. They only get executed once. Um, just to basically get the radio configured depending on if the PTT switch has been depressed or not. In this particular case, that's the PTT on the microphone. Um, I don't think we're going too much from it there. Right, so when the receiver gets turned on, and this is when we get to the sort of filter relay, um, we do a few things. So the input select, we tell the library, right, the input now on receive is going to be the audio input line in. And we unmute the headphones because we want to feed the audio out of the headphones off to the audio amplifier going to the speaker. Now, what you can do with that mixer is you can set the gain. You can multiply or you can adjust the gain of any input. So what I've done here is on the receive side, I have that going to input zero and the transmit goes to input one. So on receive, we want to allow input zero to pass through, so I multiply it by a gain of one, and I want to not allow the transmit audio to go through. So input one, I multiply it by a gain of zero, which effectively turns it off. Hence the reason why it's effectively acting as a, as a pseudo relay, so to speak. Um, when you come to turn off the receiver, and it's basically the reverse, we, we mute the headphones, and then when we turn on the transmitter, we now tell the input select, you're now going to be using the audio mic in. We unmute the line out because we now want to feed that line out audio to our mixer. Um, we can, in the software, modify that line out level and we can also modify the gain of the microphone. <coughs> it will be useful later on, just like a normal uh, commercial radio to adjust the mic gain and we'll do exactly the same thing here. We'll put logic in the circuit that you can use the um, rotary encoder to adjust the mic gain. And here we have, we, uh, we begin that low pass filter on the transmit and we use those coefficients that we assigned before. So uh, if you go back and look at that last video in the SDR series, it'll tell a bit more about how to, uh, to basically enable fur filters. And as you can see here, that relay. So the input zero, which was the receive side, I'm now multiplying by zero, so turning it off. And then the input to input one, I'm now multiplying one, so I'm allowing that to go through. So again, that relay is now toggled across to the um, to the transmit side. And the transmit received on the transmit side, turning it off. We basically just mute the line and we end that filter. We don't have to do too much more because that's taken care of by 
the turn on command in terms of reconfiguring the input select. So that's essentially the um, four little functions that <coughs> that uh, change the radio over from transmit to receive. Um, no changes here in terms of uh, in terms of adjusting or using the rotary encoder and how that's interpreted. Um, so really no other change there. I think that's worth looking at. Uh, again, this is now just all from the transmit side. So um, the BFO is no longer a BFO. It's a carrier oscillator. Um, and yeah, so you, you can't quite see there. But what I had attempted to do is I attempted to um, set the carrier frequency far enough away from the skirts of the crystal filter to try and have it suppressed. Um, and actually it suppressed it reasonably well, but unfortunately there's still enough getting through which is getting amplified, getting out the antenna. So it's it's not it's not perfect and it's certainly not ideal as, as you can see in that waterfall plot in the SDR capture that we're still transmitting <coughs> a reasonable amount of carrier. And we're also seeing that in the oscilloscope. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll end there. That's been seven minutes of talking about the software, so I don't want to make this too long. Um, uh, so let's just leave it there. Um, again, apologies for being away, but um, any questions, just sing out, and we'll just keep playing. And like I say, this software here, we will utilize um, on that other radio. So let's end there, um, 73s, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon.